This PowerPoint deals with impulse examples. The first example we have, we have a baseball that is thrown with a force of 800 newtons for 0.4 seconds. What's the impulse on the baseball? Well, the impulse, the letter J actually denotes the, uh, the letter for impulse. Impulse equals net force times time. So we take the net force, which is 800 newtons, and multiply by time, which is 0.4 seconds. We get that it's, the impulse is going to be 320 newton seconds. The next example, it says that a slap shot made by a hockey player delivers an average force of 900 newtons and an impulse of 18 newton seconds to a puck of mass 225 grams. How much time is the stick in contact with the puck? Well, if we go back to the original equation where impulse equals net force times time, in order to find time, we have to divide both sides by net force. So we get impulse divided by force, and that's going to be equal to 18 divided by 900, which gives us a total of time of 0 0.02 seconds that the puck and the stick are going to be in contact with each other. The next example, in order to find the impulse here, we actually have to take the area into the curve. Um, ordinarily, we take the net force and, and multiply it by time to find the impulse, but since we don't have a constant force here, we have a changing force, then we need to take the area under here. So we need to divide this into shapes that we can find the area for. Um, so these three shapes, uh, get the entire area for this part right here and the area is going to be equal to the impulse. So the first part is going to be one half uh, base times height. The base goes from 2 to 4 and the height goes from 2 to 4. So 4 minus 2, 4 minus 2, and that's 2 times 2 which is 4 and then half of that is going to be 2 newton seconds. And then this bottom part right here, this square is going to be base times height goes from 2 to 4 which is 2 seconds and then it goes up from 0 to 2 which is 2 newtons. Multiply those together you get 4 newton seconds. And then the last part here, this rectangle is going to be base of 1 second and a height of 4 newtons and multiply Apply those together, you get 4 newton seconds. Add them all together, you get the total area, which gives us 2 plus 4 plus 4, which is 10 newton seconds. So the impulse of this graph is going to, between 2 and 5 seconds is going to be 10 newton seconds. The next example, it says that the uh, what's the average force or effective force for 2 to 5 seconds. So basically, since we have a changing force the entire time, what one force what force could I apply to get the same amount of uh, impulse over the same amount of time? So the same impulse and the same time, we just need to find the force. So impulse is going to be equal to uh, force times time. So to find the force, we take the impulse divided by time. The impulse, the total impulse, we found to be 10 newton seconds. And then multiply, or I'm sorry, divide that by the, the time, which is 3 seconds, so 3.33. 3.33 newtons is going to be the force, the average force needed in order to create the same impulse. So if we look at this and we plot it, you can see that the 3.33 uh, is about right here. So 3.33, if we were to make a rectangle with 3.33 newtons for 3 seconds, and that would give us the same area that this area gave us here. So if you kind of think of this as... Um, as kind of some dirt that we can cut off here and then fill in here then level it off then that would be the same area and the same area means that the that we could have that same amount of force for the same for uh, the 3.33 newtons for three seconds and get the same impulse for this changing force so that's going to be our effective or average force and then we go ahead and, and complete this um, this worksheet